hometown stalker. In a way, this is a story from a long time ago. At the same time, I don't think it has ever fully ended for me. When I was a freshman in high school, a mutual acquaintance introduced me to an upperclassman. Being new to this school, I didn't know much about his reputation. He seemed like a pretty chill dude, a little reserved, not many friends. But that wasn't out of the ordinary for my crowd at the time. <clears throat> Everything was fine for the first few weeks. We would occasionally chat in the hallway before school started, and we would talk casually online after school. It was all very surface level. What do you like to do? How was your day? Etc. Around the third or fourth week of knowing each other, the dynamic shifted completely. We were still talking at the same casual frequency, but the subject matter coming from his end became intense and uncomfortable for me. Content warning, mentions of suicide, ideation, and sexual assault forthcoming. He started sending me messages online, outlining very dark and personal aspects of his life. He spoke repeatedly on wanting to kill himself, and he went into graphic detail about sexual fantasies that he had, particularly emphasizing his rape fantasies. If I could go back and change anything about my experience, this is the point where I would have told someone that something was wrong. He made me promise not to tell anyone, and I was young and scared. I kept everything to myself and hoped that I could somehow help him through his problems. And then came the obsession. It got so bad that the only point in the day when I could be truly free of him was when I was asleep. At school, he started popping up everywhere, just unpredictably enough that I couldn't avoid him. One day he'd be waiting at my locker, the next he'd be hanging around outside of my classes. And to be clear, he had to go quite far out of his way to do any of this. As an upperclassman by layout of the school, his locker and classrooms were very distant from mine. I'm still not sure how he got a hold of it, or if perhaps he just followed me around until he knew it, but he had my whole class schedule memorized. When he didn't find me in person, he would give my classmates long handwritten notes to give to me. At home, I was bombarded by messages online. He would send me paragraph after paragraph of upsetting content. If I didn't respond online, he would text me. It was like my own personal nightmare from sunup to sundown. He also told me repeatedly that I was the only reason he hadn't killed himself, and that he would kill himself if I wasn't in his life. Likewise, he told me that he would kill himself if I told anyone about his suicidal thoughts. I now know that none of this was true, and that even if it was, it would not have been my fault, but as a terrified 14-year-old, I believed it. Then he started dropping hints that he was romantically interested in me. This escalated until the moment that I had been dreading finally arrived. He asked me on a date. I declined him in as impersonal a manner as I could manage, telling him that I just didn't feel ready to date anyone yet. He seemed fine with this until later in the evening, when I received a message containing a single sentence that I will never forget. When I see my crushes in the hall, I just don't know how to stop myself from doing bad things to them. Maybe this is creepy enough without context, but from our past conversations, I knew that doing bad things was the terminology that he specifically used to reference his rape fantasies. He was threatening me, and he was doing it in a way that was veiled enough to pass off as innocent if I were to show anyone else the message. He kept trying to get me to meet him in private locations. After that, example, come to my house after school. We're so close, but you've never even seen it. I didn't know which threat I was more afraid he'd make good on. The one he constantly made against himself or the, the one he made against my own bodily anatomy. I finally reached out to the mutual acquaintances who introduced us about some of the things that had been going on, only revealing my experience. Still, not sharing any of my stalker's personal details, and the response made my stomach turn. Oh, Obscura, I'm so sorry. He has a pattern. First he asks you out, then he tries to get into your pants. After I turned him down, I started finding him parked outside my house. I found out that he had done this to several people before me. At least one person had allegedly sought a restraining order against him. By this point, I was on edge everywhere I went. I didn't know where he'd show up next or what he'd try if he found me. The months that followed him asking me out were the most tense months of my entire life. All the while, I was still being constantly bombarded by the messages, notes, texts, gifts, random appearances in school, 
The last part is kind of a blur to me. All the memories of how it ended are mixed up in my head and the chronology is a little fuzzy. What I do know for sure is that he left me a handwritten note detailing, not for the first time, the manner in which he was going to kill himself. Except this time it was different because he wrote when he was going to do it. I know that this was the straw that finally broke my vow of silence about his secrets. I couldn't hold it in anymore. I broke down sobbing in front of my mother and gave her the note. I know that she reported this to someone at my school and he was pulled out of school for a while for mental health treatment. I know that I was able to break contact with him in the tension that followed his return. There were many other incidents that occurred prior to me breaking contact, and I had to see him in school and around town after the fact, but I think I got lucky in that one only major incident occurred afterwards, as far as I'm aware. When I had my permit, I was practicing driving on some country roads with my mother. Heading back into town, we noticed that a car that had been behind us for a while still hadn't turned. Odd, but maybe they still had to go further into town. My mother had me turn into a cul-de-sac and drive around the loop so that I could head back out into the country for a little more practice. The car followed us into the cul-de-sac, then back out of it, not pulling up to any of the houses. At this point, we're more than a little freaked, but I did as instructed and kept driving into the country. The car followed us far out to a point that we deemed safe enough to turn around at, then followed us all the way back into town and through several more neighborhoods that my mother had me abruptly turn into an effort to confuse the driver. After a very long game of cat and mouse, the car just sort of left. We were pretty shaken up. While I have no definitive proof that it was my stalker, I am convinced that it was him. Neither my mother nor I have been able to think of even one other person who would do something like that without letting us in on their joke afterwards. In our hometown is small enough that any outsider with some sort of nefarious intent would likely have been scared off once we entered the brightly lit, cleared, populated parts of town. In my gut, I know it was him. I was able to file most of this away in the back of my mind for many years, but at some point in college, the down broke and it all hit me very suddenly. I started having nightmares that I was being followed. I started having moments where I'd be overwhelmed with fear that someone was in my apartment even if I knew that it was impossible, and I'd have to go check every inch of my living space to make sure that it was clear. I stopped being able to sleep through the night. For a while, I thought I was going to fail out of school and lose my job because I stopped being able to function in my everyday life. I pulled through the worst of it with the help of a good therapist, but it still comes and goes in waves. Some days are good, some days are hard. Some hard days turn into hard weeks, or even hard months. But I take each day as it comes, and I get to enjoy so many things now that my stalker never had the chance to take away from me.